Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Rhiannon and in today's video I'm going to be taking you guys book shopping with me. It is currently the 28th of December and I believe for the last two days Waterstones have had a 50% off hardcover book sale. They did have the same sale on last year and I did take advantage of that. I filmed a can book shopping with me video which I will leave linked up above and down below for you guys if you do want to check that one out. And I thought I would do it again this year because you guys loved that video. I of course love book shopping, I'm a book collector and I did get some money for Christmas so I did want to go and have a browse. I will just say the closest Waterstones to me is about 30 minutes away and it's definitely not the biggest. So with today being the last day of their 50% off sale, I am a little bit anxious that things will have gone out of stock, but we're gonna go there, we're gonna have a browse, we're gonna see what takes my fancy. Unlike last year, I don't have any specific books that I will be looking for. I think I'm just gonna go in, have a look around, see if anything jumps out at me and take it from there. So I'm not going in with any expectations, I do reckon I will buy a few books though so definitely stay tuned for the rest of the video where I of course take you with me into Waterstones and then show you guys what I bought at the end. I also do quickly want to apologise for this hair. I was going to sit down now and straighten my hair to look a little bit more presentable but we are honestly having the worst storm right now. It is raining so hard and I thought I am not going to spend some time now trying to make my hair look nice for it to be completely <laughs> soaked by rain as soon as I step out of the house. So yeah, ignore the hair. We're just gonna go with it. Hopefully the weather calms down by later on because obviously I'll be buying books and I don't want them to be getting damaged in this weather. So I might have to kind of take a few different bags or something with me as well to make sure that they will be safe. But I don't have too much more to say now. I feel like I'm just gonna ramble on if I do continue talking. So let's just hop in the car and head on over to Waterstones. Right, so we've made it to Waterstones. It doesn't look too busy, so hopefully it's fine, but yeah, let's go see what books there are. the state of me once again you guys it is currently quarter past 10 at night and I'm only just getting around to doing this haul for you guys so we didn't actually get into Llandidno till about half past two today. So we were a bit later than we wanted to be, but we got there, we were all really hungry. There were four of us. There was myself, Tom, Adriana and Sean. And so we decided that we would go to Weatherspoons first to have a meal, which was lovely. So we did that and then that's when we headed over to Waterstones. As you saw, the shop itself was quite quiet and I was pleasantly surprised by that actually. I thought it would be a lot busier. However, they did not 
not have a lot of stock. They had a load of paperbacks, as you probably saw, but the hardcovers were just not the best selection, and they didn't have a lot of the books as well. So yeah, I found it quite difficult to actually find stuff that I was interested in. However, I did end up buying five books, I think. So obviously managed to do that. And I have got them here in my lovely London Waterstones tote bag. The woman at the till said that she really loved this one, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really nice thing to say today. But I did, first of all, bring a scarf because I was terrified that my books were going to get damaged by the rain. However, when we got to Llandid, no, it wasn't raining anymore, so that was not necessary. And then I did end up buying four hardcover books and one paperback book. And I'm really, really shocked about this, you guys, but three of the hardcovers are thrillers and then one of them is a Greek myth retelling. You guys know I'm mainly a fantasy reader and as you can tell by the shelves behind me, the adult high fantasy that I'm tending to pick up a lot more now is mainly available in paperback form, aside from the new John Gwynn books that you see here. But that is the issue that I had with the majority of the things I was picking up, is that the books that I was interested in and wanted were paperbacks. So you saw that I picked up Mistborn book three, however I put it back because I was like, I don't need it, I haven't read the second one yet, there's no point picking it up, it's not in any sort of deal. So I did end up putting that one back, I put another paperback book back, and then because a lot of fantasy books don't come out in hardcover, I couldn't really gravitate towards that genre. So the books that I've gone towards have been thrillers, which again is quite surprising to me, but I have been reading a lot more thrillers lately. They have definitely been books that have been keeping my interest, obviously because of the nature of the books, things keep happening, plot points are revealed, and all this drama is going on, and I think that that's what I've been needing this year because I've been in such a weird reading mood and reading slump. So I guess I will start with those ones. I will have this video time stamped as well, so if you aren't bothered about some books, then feel free to skip ahead. But kicking this one off, we have The Butcher and the Wren by Elena Urkuhart, and I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I know that this person is a very famous podcaster from what I have gathered from people online. She is a true crime podcaster, I want to say. Yeah, so it says here that she is the science-loving co-host of the chat-topping show Morbid, a true crime podcast. As an autopsy technician by trade, she offers a unique perspective from deep inside the morgue. So that's really cool, however I've not heard the best reviews about this book, but I was definitely intrigued. I love my true crime. I haven't listened to Morbid actually, but it's definitely on my list. My main true crime podcast that I listen to is Mile Higher. It features Kendall Ray and her husband Josh. And for those of you who don't know, Kendall Ray is a true crime YouTuber. She has about 3 million subscribers, I want to say. And then I also listen to videos by Eleanor Neal, Molly Westbrook, Danielle Christie, Danielle Hallen, and a whole bunch of other people that I am not going to list otherwise will be here for days but those are just a few examples of some channels that I watch. I do tend to watch a true crime video a day just because when I do my makeup, when I get ready in the mornings, that's what I put on. And so as I mentioned, I will definitely be getting into Morbid. However, this is really intriguing to me because of the fact that the author is an autopsy technician, which is something that you really don't hear about often. It's definitely concerning me that it's this short. And I don't really know what it's about, to be honest with you, but it's one that I looked at when it first came out because I think Chloe from Chloe Reads Books and Becca from Becca and the Books both hauled this one and said that they were excited about it and mentioned the fact that the author was a true crime podcaster and all that jazz. So yeah, I essentially picked it up without really knowing anything. But on the inside cover, it says, Wren was never afraid of the dark until she learned that some monsters are real. In deep Louisiana, a serial killer with a taste for medical experimentation is completing his most ambitious project yet. The media call him the Butcher, and so far he's proved impossible to catch. With her encyclopedic knowledge of humanity's darkest minds and years of experience examining her victims, forensic pathologist Dr. Ren Muller is the best there is. The longer the Butcher's killing spree continues, the more determined she is to bring him to justice 
and yet he continues to elude her. As body after body pile up on Ren's examination table, her obsession grows. Pressure to put an end to the slaughter mounts, and her enemy becomes more brazen. How far is Ren willing to go to draw the butcher into the light? That sounds very similar to Dexter. If you guys have watched that series, then it might sound familiar to you as well, but there's a character in that called the Bay Harbor Butcher, and that character is a serial killer that claims many, many victims. So I can definitely see the similarities in this and Dexter is also a blood spatter expert so yeah that's definitely giving me that kind of vibes but yeah the only thing that concerns me is that it's quite short I'm not sure how many pages there are I think around 240 so definitely a short read but hopefully it's one I can read in one sitting and we'll see whether I enjoy it or whether I fall into the other category of people being a little bit disappointed. And then just in case you want to know I do have my receipt here. So this book was originally, oh my gosh, this one was £19. What? It is as well, it's 18 .99. That is insane considering it's such a tiny book. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought it was gonna be 16 at the most, but <laughs> apparently not. But it was 18 99 I got £7.50 off in the half price sale. And then I do also get a 5% discount as well because I have a Waterstone student account. And then I have also just noticed, sorry that this video is all over the place, but this is a signed copy as well, which is really cool. I don't think that all of them were because from what I remember these stickers were red and it just said half price on them so I think I must have grabbed a signed one just on accident which is pretty cool but yeah that's this book done I feel like I've talked way too much about it so let's just move on okay next up we have Breaking by Amanda Cassidy and this intrigued me actually because it reminded me of the Madeline McCann true crime story which if you don't know involves a young girl that did disappear whilst on holiday with her family and that is essentially what this is it says a missing child abroad a family's worst fear a mother keeping secrets and the story has just begun on a sun hazed afternoon in the Florida Keys a child goes missing from the beach. Dr. Mirren Fitzpatrick appeals to the world to help her find her eight-year-old adopted daughter. The family are on holiday from Ireland, far, far from home, and desperate to return there as they arrived together. Yet the police are immediately suspicious of Mirren. She was drinking at a bar, alone, shortly before reporting that her youngest child had disappeared. As rumours abound about Mirren's past, a trial by media ensues, and she is turned from a figure of pity to the villain of the piece. And then a small body is found dumped in the ocean. Is Mirren a heartbroken mother, or the architect of her daughter's fate? So just from that, if you're familiar with the Madeleine McCann case, you can see the similarities between both of them, which I definitely think is an interesting thing to kind of replicate because that was such a big case and there was so much going on in it that it's just absolutely crazy. And so, yeah, when I sort of saw the tagline and read the synopsis for this, I couldn't leave it there. I was really intrigued and I wanted to give it a read because, as I mentioned, I love things like this especially when we have an unreliable narrator as well so obviously here the mother figure is one that is not trustworthy and I feel like she'll have you second guessing everything so this was definitely one that I wanted to pick up this one was 14 99 but of course I got 50% off so I did get £7.50 off this one next up we have one that I feel like I've seen around but then when I kind of brought it up to my cousin she was a bit clueless about it so maybe I've just kind of made it up or maybe it's similar to another book that's out I'm not too sure but the last thriller that I have is The Sanctuary by Emma Horton and this first of all caught my eye because of the cover I am drawn to blue covers because blue is my favorite color this also has a pretty cool spine as well and then I picked it up and started reading the synopsis and was just like wow I need to read this. So, the little snippet says, a brilliant locked room thriller set in a mysterious retreat in the Mexican desert from the best-selling author of The Dark. So instantly I was intrigued and hooked by that. And then we have the actual synopsis that says, Zoe enjoys her life. She fills it with travel, casual work, and partying with friends and tries not to think about what's gone wrong in the past. But after a night out clubbing in New York to celebrate her best friend's birthday, Zoe wakes in a stifling white room she's never seen before 
with no memory of how she got there. Filled with panic, she searches the luxurious house for someone who can tell her where she is, only to find herself entirely alone in what appears to be a vast, unending desert. Until, in the distance, she hears a woman screaming. I have no clue what's going on just from that synopsis. I'm so intrigued. I really want to pick it up as soon as possible, actually. And I feel like this is one that is definitely going to scare me and creep me out. But you guys know I love a murder mystery. I love my Agatha Christie locked room mysteries as well. So yeah, hopefully this is a good one. And as you can tell, I am definitely excited to pick this one up. So that one was £16.99 originally. So I ended up paying £8.50 for it. The last hardcover book that I bought, as I mentioned, is a Greek myth retelling. And this is one where I actually wasn't sure if I already owned it. In my head, I'd pre-ordered it. And so obviously that meant that I should have it. However, I did take a picture of my shelves before I left just so I knew which books that I owned and which special editions that I owned and things like that. And this wasn't on my shelves and I was really confused. So, I picked up Ithaca by Claire North and this retells the story of Penelope who if you don't know is the wife of Odysseus who we follow in the Odyssey. For this one it just says 17 years ago King Odysseus sailed to war with Troy taking with him every man of fighting age from the Isle of Ithaca. None of them has returned and the women of Ithaca have been left behind to run the kingdom. Penelope was barely into womanhood when she wed Odysseus. While he lived her position was secure but now Years on, speculation is mounting that her husband is dead and suitors are beginning to knock at her door. No one man is strong enough to claim Odysseus's empty throne, not yet. But as everyone waits for the balance of power to tip, Penelope knows that any choice she makes could plunge Ithaca into a bloody civil war. And then there's a bit on the back as well that says, this is the story of Penelope of Ithaca, famed wife of Odysseus, as it has never been told before. Beyond Ithaca's shores, the whims of gods dictate the wars of men. But on the isle, it's the choices of the abandoned women and their goddesses that will change the course of the world. So as you can tell, this is a feminist retelling of the Greek myth. And I am honestly here for it. I don't really want to know much more. I feel like this is is one that I'm going to dive into without any expectation. I have read the Odyssey, I really did enjoy it and I do have a deep love for Greek mythology and the retellings that I have read so far about women written by women have been fantastic so I definitely hope that that is the case for this one and I can confirm from looking at my shelves after getting home that I don't own this one and yeah I'm really glad that I now do but I'm just so confused as to why I was convinced that I pre-ordered it and I obviously did so yeah, this was a really good find. I'm glad I now own it and I will probably be picking this one up around the summertime just because those are the kind of vibes that I get from the Greek myth books. That one again was £16.99 so I saved £8.50 which is honestly a steal if you ask me and yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to get all four of these hardcovers half price and hopefully I will enjoy every single one. If not, my mum loves the thriller so I will pass them on to her but I'm sure to enjoy them all and for half the price I just could not leave them there. And then the last book I have is one that I paid full price for except for the 5% discount because it's such a beautiful book and it's a sequel to a book that I have already started. So that one is Cursed by Marissa Meyer and this is the sequel to Gilded by the same author of course. The cover is definitely what drew me in. I mean look how beautiful that is. I've already told you that blue is my favourite colour and this is just definitely my vibes but look at this you guys. <gasps> we have an amazing sprayed edge and as soon as I saw this I just could not leave it there and so I did end up taking it home. One thing I will say though is that I'm really annoyed that this wasn't out in hardcover. So the first book was and I pre-ordered it, I received it and I have it in hardcover. However I don't think any were released for Cursed. I think it was just released in paperback which is fine but not fine if you're a book collector who wants a matching set. So that's a bit annoying, but I did decide to get this one anyway because as I mentioned, I have started Gilded. I did have to put it down for a bit just because I wanted to read Christmassy books in December. However, I will be picking it up to close off this year and I thought it would be a good idea to have the sequel to hand so that I can dive straight into this one if there is some sort of cliffhanger that has me desperately wanting to continue. In case you don't know, Gilded is a retelling of the story of Rumpelstiltskin. It is a very 
dark and twisted retelling. It is YA, so it's not as dark as it could be. However, we have a young woman who is out one day when she encounters a king of the dead sort of figure, and she lies to him and says that she can spin silver into gold. Now, the king just lets this comment pass by, and the girl doesn't think anything of it. However, on the next full moon, the king arises again and takes the girl to his castle and tells her that she needs to spin some straw into gold for him, otherwise she will be killed and her father alongside her. And then, as you can imagine, with the story of Rumpelstiltskin, someone appears to help her along on her way, and honestly, that is as far as I've gotten in the story. I don't know what happens from there, so I desperately need to continue. But as I mentioned, I saw this one there. It's a beautiful edition, it has frayed edges all around, and yeah, I'm so, so happy to own this now, especially because, as I mentioned, if I loved the first one and really want to dive into this straight away, then I obviously can. And then that one was £8.99, and of course, I didn't get the 50% off deal on that, but I did get the 5% off on that, which saved me about 44p. So there we have it. These are all of the books that I bought in the Waterstones half price sale today. Please do let me know what you think of this stack. As I mentioned, my Waterstones, unfortunately, didn't have the wider selection, so I was quite limited to what I could buy. However, I do think that I've picked some good books. I've never read anything from the hardcover authors, actually, so it will be interesting to see whether they are authors that I want to read more from or not. And as I mentioned, I have been getting into my thrillers lately, so the fact that I have three new ones now to add to my collection is honestly great for me. So yeah, please do let me know what you think of this stack, and if you've read any of these, please let me know your thoughts down below as well. But that is it for today's video, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed. I definitely think that last year's selection was better, as I've mentioned <laughs> throughout this video, so definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And if you have seen it, leave a comment below letting me know if last year's book haul was better or if this year's book haul was better. If you have made it this far into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me a yellow emoji of your choice down in the comments. From all of these thrillers, there is some sort of yellow, possibly green, on the cover, but I'm gonna just go with yellow because it's a nice, bright, happy colour for this time of year. So if you'd like to let me know that you're still here but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say, please do go ahead and do that now. As well as that, don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!